far away. Pretty, uh... Oh, <laughs> Where's our great mate? <laughs> Not here. God, he'd be disappointed. It was a yeah. pretty, uh, pretty interesting game, that one. What do you make of it? Just... Yeah, it wasn't the uh, wasn't the prettiest game going around. It was a pretty look. It was a fierce contest. The, the conditions were dewy, obviously underfoot, and it's a challenge, you know, to get the ball movement that we probably both desire. But um, you know, I thought we looked okay, but we just couldn't quite get that reward going inside fifty, which is a little bit disappointing. And then when we tried to use the ball a little bit with a bit more composure, we probably turned it over a little bit as well. So it was one of those games. It was an ugly win, but a good win against what I think is a very very good side in Port Adelaide, as we know. So. We'll always take it against a pretty pretty fierce opposition. And in the context of the season, it makes you seven and five. They drop to five and seven. You briefly, well, depending on other results, you're back in the eight. It's and, and following the Sydney, you know, a very close loss to Sydney. It's a it's a pretty important win, isn't it? It is. It is, especially after thanks for bringing up the Sydney loss again. But um, it, it is, you know, against a really good side. I think Port, you know, they're probably a little bit like us, a little bit inconsistent at the start. Yeah. But, um, you know, to, to win those games with the guys vying for the spots in the eight, it's really, really important. So, um, you know, credit where credit's due, they played a pretty good brand, brand of footy, I reckon. They, they took the game off us there for a little while, but I thought we wrestled it back towards the end. Liam Baker, did we just sort of run our superlatives for, for him? Yeah. <laughs> you know, David Teague said a really good comment. You sort of want one each line. You know, he's just such an important player and... He's out of contract too, so he, he's not helping us. <laughs> um, but he's uh, he's just a wonderful player. You know, he's a guy that you sort of love to coach because you just you wind him up and off he goes. And you know, I thought his last quarter was pretty special. When he came into the club, could you could you ever have envisaged he would become the player he has become? Well, no, because you sort of look at him and, like everyone else, we look at his size. Yeah. But what we don't see is the enormous heart of the kid. Um, our recruiters saw something; they knew this kid deserved to play AFL footy. And, I think what we've we've seen with the, the guys that are short in stature, they can play the game. You know, we saw one of our boys tonight, you know, Judson Clark, a little bit short, but really composed with the ball. You know, Caleb Daniel's been doing it a long time, but we're very fortunate to have a guy like Liam in our footy club, no question. Do you, do you get involved in contract talks to make sure he stays a tiger? Yeah, no, look, I'm... Look, he's a pretty, pretty handy player, isn't he? So, yeah, we're confident. Can you talk us through the decision to go from that more methodical style of footy you guys played early in the year back to the more turnover-centric game you guys have played? Did you have to get together as a coaching group and just decide that what you were doing beforehand wasn't working? How, yeah, how did you come to no, that? It was probably a combination of a number of factors. We, we've always been a strong turnover side. You know, a stoppage-based side, we are not. Um, we'd like to get a bit better in that area and we're, we're reasonable tonight. But what probably happened is, you know, we tried some guys forward, you know, Noah Bolter, uh, Liam Baker earlier in the year. But we probably found our possession game, game wasn't to the level that it would be. And we've started to see over the last six weeks and put a couple of guys in different positions. But all of a sudden, that part of our game has really returned. Um, it's a Richmond DNA. Um, we probably tried a couple of things to, to see what we could get with moving the ball forward. But it was attractive and those guys played very well. But we weren't playing our style of game as compared to the last you know, five to six weeks. That's a good question. Where would you prefer to play Noah Bolter? Yeah, sorry. sorry, mate. Where would you prefer to play Noah Bolter? He, like he's Smith. I'm struggling to keep up, but he yeah. forward and he went back. And... Well, it is. It's you know, it's one of those guys, and with him and Gibkiss, it was sort of always something we were quite excited by, the fact that we could have both. And, you know, Gibkiss goes forward and kicks a, a pretty important goal and look really, really damaging up there as well. So, you know, I, I can't honestly say he's going to play forward, he'll play some ruck and he'll also play back. You know, Lynchy is back next week, so we've got some selection dilemmas to, to go through. But, um, you know, he's just so important in those big, strong contests when we need it to. You know, the, the pleasing thing for me is Noel didn't have his best game, but his last quarter I thought was very important when he went back. Just still, still down back, um, Grimes, Tarrant and Boston, they all seem to really stand tall tonight, especially Grimes, he's 200. Yeah, he is terrific. He had some just... You know, his stats won't reflect it, but there's some important contests where he won or halved, um, and that's the value of Dylan. And I remember saying, you know, when we were speaking about him in his 200th, even as a coach, I reckon I under, underrate his performance. But what I do know is if there's a Robbie Gray, I'll just put Dylan on him. And it's job done 80% of the time. And, you know, the, the man he's become both on the field and off the field is an incredible testament to how hard he works. He is a prototype of what an AFL footballer, if they work hard enough, can get to. You know, he suffered significant injury history in his first two to possibly three years. And through nothing but Sisu slash grit, he's become the player that we, you know, captain our footy club. Superstar. 
What's that? What's your say, grit It's the Finnish version of grit. The, you said the last quarter, Dim, I'm sure you may have had some other priorities didn't at the time. Didn't see it. <laughs> Tom Jarnas and... Um, Oh, and yeah. Zach Butler's clashed heads. Yeah. And um, it's a bad one. They come from the field, return quite quickly. Do you have any concern about the lack of a concussion? I know it's the other club. Oh, but... listen, I don't think there's a sport in the world that looks after their players as well as AFL. Um, so from our point of view, you know, I've known those doctors for many, many years that are at Port Adelaide and they're, you know, like our guys. They're all first class and they never put a player at risk, no question. They make a quick assessment and that's what they do. That's what they're paid to do. And they, they put them back. But, geez, you got to love that about our game. Like, it, you wouldn't see a collision like that anywhere else in the world, I reckon. It, it's just so, you know, a game, whilst not the prettiest game tonight, it's in a pretty good place. You touched on Jackson, sorry, you, know, you touched on Jackson quite earlier. Um, what did you make of his first game, especially that, that first quarter, two goals in his first two games? Yeah, it was good. He's just a, he's just a footy head. He's a smart player. Um, he gets in a... You know, spots that are really, really dangerous, and you know everything he does, it's really clean. That, that's what we love about him, and you know he's going to get better. Um, the conditions probably didn't really favour, you know, the his skill level tonight as well. Like he's very, very good at using the ball, but um, we're really excited about what he is. He's, he's like a, you know, another Kane Lambert. You know, that guy can get up and back at the ground, covers it really, really well, and it's just a footy head. You know, we love coaching him. We love what he's brought to our footy club. Never stop smiling. Just loving the game. Which is really important. Did Shai Bolton? Um, what did you make of his night? What was your? What was going through your head when you used that one? Handball it. <laughs> no, it was funny, wasn't it? Like he had, he would have kicked five five points. But some of his stuff that he does is just it's breathtaking, really. And you know, if he just had a finish with you know three goals, two, it makes my job a whole lot easier and his game a little bit better. But um, yeah, he's he's. he's don't get me wrong, he's torn some games apart, but he's close, I reckon, at doing it at a high level. So um, he'll be a little bit disappointed with his game, but the fact of the matter is he got in the right position to have those shots. Um, just hoped he would have been a little bit cleaner at various stages. Where, where do you think he's at in his development? Like, at what stage? How close is he to his best? Because it looks pretty tantalising, but... <laughs> yeah, it is. Edges. And I think, you know, he's he's a guy that has worked incredibly hard at his craft as well. You know, he's... Um, he's done a lot of work, you know, probably similar to Dust and got a good understanding of what his strengths are, but more importantly works on his deficiencies to get them to another level. And, you know, for the life of me, I can't remember how old he is, but he's only going to come into his prime at, at, at some stage. He wouldn't be too far away. But what he's doing at the, the moment is every year we've had him, he's, you know, improved a step every year. So he's had a great year. Damien, you lose the lead start of the last quarter. I think you went to the coaching back of the box to... <laughs> um, how important was that last quarter for you guys? Yeah, it was. Um, you know, the, the frustrating thing is we, we probably left some goals on it. You know, I think we kicked 3 6 or 3 7, it may have been. It was similar last week as well. We probably dominated the last quarter last week and just didn't get the scoreboard. It was probably similar this week as well. Told me not to mention last week. Yeah, I know. Sorry, <laughs> I keep bringing it up. But um, it, it was pleasing. And, yeah, the Port are always a good side. They're really well coached with Ken. They were flipping some things forward, so they had to get a seventh forward. They were at a seventh forward at various stages. So, you know, I thought our guys handled it well, won the ball back and, and got the ball played in our half, which is really important in the, the back end of that quarter. Yep. Is he a bloke who's not short on confidence? I mean, the, the second kick he's had Dusty running through and he's... Yeah. The um, he backs in his ability, which you, you want your players to do, and... Look, he mightn't have even seen Dustin, I'm not too sure. But what, what we do love is he will he's happy to have that last kick inside 50. You know, those sort of players, I reckon, are really, really valuable. Um, and you think about what this kid's going to become, we're really excited about that. He works incredibly hard. He's so diligent. As soon as he walked in the door, our players just fell in love with him. You touched on Lambert. What was the final decision of making a medical sub? What was the final? Oh, oh, behind us. Oh, yeah, well, he... Well, he wasn't even going to play initially. And then we thought, oh, well, maybe... You know, similar to Cumberland last week, the probability of playing is a, you know, calculated risk. I think like a 30% chance of playing or something like that. So we thought, oh, if he does play, let's sit him as sub. And, you know, then if he does come on, he plays limited minutes, which he was OK to do. We probably thought ideally what we'd like to do is get him close. And he's never going to be 100%, but as close as we could. Um, so that he wasn't playing. And then we thought, oh, why don't we use him as sub and, and see how we go. So we sort of got the best of both worlds, if that makes sense. Does that mean that that will happen again next week, or how? Where is he at? Um, look, it's probably he'd be more inclined to start 
at this stage. But once again, we'll make that decision during the week. And, and yeah. Tommy Lynch? Yeah, he'll uh, he'll be back available. Um, as far as I know, he's very close this week, so he'll be good good get. Just one, sorry, just yep. one more. Yeah. Just a ruck battle. Yeah. Guys, Paul Cameron was out. Everybody yeah. Was and, and you guys obviously don't know. Yeah. What was your take It's always the way. I reckon it just happens because there's only they're really only roving to one player, so it's you know it's a challenge. We knew it was going to be a challenge coming in because sometimes when you think you're going to get ruck dominance, you don't actually do it because it becomes a 50-50 ball really. So um, it was always going to be a challenge. Centre bounce, uh, we went down, but I think around the grounds it was relatively even. We got beaten heavily in the in our forward 50 zone. So yeah, tough. Thanks. Thank you.